It is a birthright of living death. The legacy. <laughs> That's their tagline. Uh, it's basically Universal's answer to, like, The Omen. It was made in the late 70s, so, like, it tries to be like every other film from the decade. You know, like, it's like a whack omen in, like, The Legend of Hell House and The House That Dripped Blood. So you get to see that old English manor mansion decor, you know, throughout, if you love that, which what draw me into watching this. I should have went with something more solid. It's my birthday and I just, just decided to throw in a movie I haven't seen before. I should have went with Raiders of the Lost Ark, but I ended up watching this. It was made on a $2.5 million budget, so it was, even though it's like relatively forgotten at this time, but it's a total fail as a horror movie. Um, it has the director from The Return of the Jedi. He would later go on to direct Return of the Jedi, Richard Marquand. And the writer is a veteran horror writer from Hammer Horror Films. He even helped write the screenplay for The Curse of Frankenstein, which is a classic horror film, one of the best ever made, especially for that era. Um, so, let me tell you the story of this one. It's basically, if you've seen the trailer, the trailer really draws you into. It's a really classic 70s style trailer, you know. Vintage 70s, awesome. It's about six heirs that are called upon or basically inadvertently summoned to this old satanic guy who is on his deathbed who's willing to pass on his quote-unquote legacy, hence the title, of his satanic powers. And so the five, five of the six have already known the guy, and there are successful people. One's a former Nazi who's like deals in like army surplus. Then there's like the head executive of the music world. They're basically people that sold their souls and now, like, their souls are being sacrificed by the head leader, the guy who owns the place. You don't even get to see. Once you finally get to see the old guy, Jason Mount Olive, <laughs> he, he looks old and crepid, and it's kind of creepy, but still not worth it, you know? There's no suspense or, like, I mean, the suspense is kind of paced out and ultimately uneventful. And there's no mystery once, like, the guests get there, you know that they're just going to be sacrificed. You get the whole routine of they're all being sacrificed, except for the lead lady, Catherine Ross. And then, so then it's just, that plays out. One gets killed, that's, you know, what looks to be an accident, then another gets killed. So then there's no story, no suspense after that, that really drives it you see everything coming so it just gets kind of disinteresting you know um and the white cat does come into play you know how they would they, they falsely advertise things just to get you to pick them up you, you know you know the drill the white cat is like a shape-shifting demon basically who is like the servant, so he's shape-shifting so he could be like a cat and then he's like an old nun type of like servant lady and like so that's how the cat comes into play and they don't use him that well in the movie. Why did they put this shit? Why did they make this movie? Why did they put it on the camera? It was a total cash grab, I agree with you Keckler. R.I.P. Keckler, wherever you are. I actually got an email. It came in as spam. It said it was from Dustin Keckler, and it was actually a virus. And like, I clicked on it, and like, I haven't even heard from the guy. It's like the creepiest thing ever. It's like something you'd see in Unsolved Mysteries. So I open it, and it like, my antivirus spyware like blocks it automatically. And I'm like, holy shit, like, is. 
Keckler, I would always go to this guy before it. I wouldn't even have watched this if I wouldn't have asked him about it. Or I mean, I, I mean, I would have asked him about it before I watched this. You know, I always go to him because if he hasn't seen a horror movie, he's at least seen the trailer or read a review on like badmovies.org or something, or knows someone or seen a review on YouTube about it. He's a legend. So this was JBM for Mr. Creep Show 9. I give it a D overall. That's one of my lowest gradings I've given in a while. And I'm